Hey everybody, this is Birch. A uh, question I got is, why don't the publishers mine their back catalog more? Why don't they, you know, they, we, we have, it seems like we're stuck in this world of trades and omnibuses and, uh, and, and floppies, and they really don't know what to do beyond that. I guess everybody's just waiting for this Marvel Unlimited kind of all-you-can-eat digital thing. Why don't the companies do more with their back stock? It's a fine question. Unfortunately, I have no answers because I, I too, despise this I, and it, it drives me nuts. I think these, these comic companies have just decades of material. In fact, the scary thing is that increasingly they've got decades of material and they don't have people who understand the material they've got, meaning they've got, you know, a lot of the curators of this content are not even aware of stuff. I mean, I, I have no joke. I've run into a decent amount of people who are unaware of the back catalog that the company possesses. There's a conversation I'm remembering from about two years ago where, uh, you know, somebody in the, I don't know, the publishing and licensing department, I don't know, somebody. Anyway, they, they, the assumption they had was that Blade, the movie, came out first, and then there were comic books that adapted it in, uh, in the 90s. And this is, th there wasn't a Blade before that. I'm like, you've got, you got so many Blade books. I mean, you've got, you've got so many books. And the stuff in the 70s and 60s, 70s, and 80s are just getting lost, let alone before that. I mean, there's so much content that I think people don't even realize exists. And the crazy part is, this is work that, by and large, has already been paid for. There may be some weird royalty contracts in there, sometimes a spider web of, of kind of credit royalties and other things you have to do if you put stuff back in print. But here's the thing about royalties. Again, by and large, I think there's a couple exceptions to this, but not many. If you have a, a you know a royalty agreement that you have to pay out to somebody, let let's say let's say let's say my buddy Wes, all right, let's say he's got he did comics for for Marvel uh, like thirty years ago, and they decide, hey, I think I'll reprint these comics, and somebody inside Marvel's like, whoa, whoa, don't do that because if you do that, you're going to have to pay Wes. Well, you, you're not paying him in advance. He's already gotten his money for that book. If you publish it and you sell 2,000 copies, then maybe you have to send Wes a check for $100. But you, 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 you've made more than that. You, you, the royalty agreements are not like 110% of the profits. That's not how the royalty agreements are structured. And you don't have to pay out what you don't sell. Do, do you know what I mean? It's, it's not like there are, there are, I have heard, I, I have never met anyone who possesses one of these who at least would say anything about it. But the, uh, the royalty checks are not based on printings. So if you, if you just decide to print like 500 copies of a book, but you sell none of them, like you, you offer them up and, and none of them sell, you, 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 don't get a, that, you don't pay out a royalty for the, the copies you printed. You pay out a royalty for the copies you sold or were ordered. And so this idea that we have to look out for some comics in our past because we might have to pay people for them, I mean, yeah, you might have to, but you're making more money than you're paying out, so who cares? Are you really so petty that you don't want to send a check to somebody? Like, like you don't want to make 90% and have to send a, you know, because poor Tony Isabella doesn't deserve his 10%. I mean, come on, send, send Tony a 10% check. I mean, why not? Like, ooh, what do you care at that point? Uh, the comic backstock and library is got so many uh, pieces of content that a creative person could very easily mix and match and produce all kinds of crap to go out, print and digital, to basically get more money for nothing. That's, that is one of the biggest kind of mysteries and messes of comics is that there's, there's so much IP just sitting there unused. And it feels like every time I talk to Joe Corallo, uh, we're talking, we, we invariably, our conversation before we start recording goes to, can you believe that this omnibus or this trade or this whatever it is, is out of print? Why? Why would you let that go out of print? I think I was a more recent one. He was mentioning the Man of Steel has three, three uh, volumes to it. And the third one's out of print. Why? Like, wh what, what in the world are you doing? I guess maybe like 20, 30 years ago, 
this was more of a problem. But today, when you can effectively use print-on-demand services, when you can drop shit, when you, there's, there's lots of ways that you can do this without putting yourself out ahead of time. I mean, it makes me think that the people running this business still have their heads stuck in like the mid 80s where you were taking more risk before you sent a book to print. But now the risk is is much, much less. And beyond that, if like if you're a a young intern or you're somebody at, at Marvel or DC, like with the popularity of comics and the lack of comics content in the mainstream, you're telling me you can't like be ambitious, call up. Call up Walmart or Target or Amazon or any of these people and say, hey, how about how about an exclusive line of some books? We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. And we're gonna collect up some issues and we're gonna package that up and we're gonna send them to you and and you know you sell them. And we'll put it on cheap newsprint, so we'll keep the price under 10 bucks, and you'll get a like a nice little zine of of comics, I'm going to create a brand new channel. And good news, I don't have to pay any writer, any artist, any, any, I'm basically, I have to produce somebody, I have to pay somebody to kind of lay this thing out into whatever new format I'm doing. I'm going to have to pay some people to quality check and everything else. Although you kind of get the feeling at the big two anyway, that the quality check is done by a, like a trained monkey they've got in a cage at this point. But I, I, I mean, this isn't a heavy outlay of cash. I will tell you it's far, far less than uh, paying uh, you know J.J. Abrams and son to come in and do a forgettable Spider-Man book that didn't sell. It's, it's, I, it, it's, it's weirdly baffling to me that the backstock of content continues to be underutilized. And in fact, if I was, uh, you know, pick your name, if I'm Scott Snyder right now, just, just I'll, I'll use him, right? He's, he's got his DC career. He's doing fine. He's, 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 he's looking at that next stage in his career. Why not go in and pitch an idea to say, hey, I want to take over a brand new line of comics, and I'm going to call these like digest zines. I, I, I don't know. Come up with a crazy name. And I am going to get a couple people that I know and I just want the permission, the rights, to be able to go out there and try and reprint and republish some of these books. And I'm going to create some new channels. I'm going to do this. And, uh, you know, that's, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'll be, you know, work out a deal where you get a bonus if you sell them, right? But maybe it's, if, if you don't sell anything, you make nothing, right? So it's a gamble. And, and just try to be the guy or the woman, you know, hey, Gail Simone, what are you doing? Like, let's get you in here and, and you can try it. Like, be the person who's going to take some of these books and give them a second life where there is an audience for that. Are you telling me John Byrne, uh, you're telling me his Man of Steel wouldn't sell today? Of course it would sell today. Like, there, there are plenty of artists. I, I hear this a lot, that artists from the 70s and 80s, they have a a dated style that nobody will read. Well, I, I say bullshit to that. I think that there's a lot of styles will work just fine. John Byrne is probably the most classic example of somebody who his style is, is it, it, it's fairly timeless. It doesn't feel like, you know, you're, it's, it's rendered easy to view, easy to look at. It doesn't lean into any kind of time period in terms of the style. I, I said this to somebody once, and they go, no, nah, but John Byrne used to draw people in disco clothing. Like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what, what, do you, what does that even mean? I, I, I think that there's, it, it would be easy to just put this stuff out again. And I'm not talking about like the true believers line. Well, that's a fine idea too. you know, reprint some of this stuff. I mean, we know that there's enough interest in this that it caused Dan Didio to make some rare public comments complaining about how the old content repackaged was out selling the new content and he was pissed about it. Like he knew, he knows it was going on. Why in the world would you not go do that? Come on, come on, Scott Snyder or, or Tom King or Sean Murphy or Brian Bendis or whoever. Come on, somebody over at DC pitch to those guys. Like I want to curate some of your old comics Package them up in a in a zine. I'll draw a new cover for it. We'll call it 
classic. I mean, don't even, don't even be creative. Classic Batman. And then we're going to put it out. And, uh, you know, we're, we'll need to borrow somebody from the legal department. I get the feeling there's plenty of those still uh, hanging around uh, at Disney and at AT&T. And we'll just make sure the royalty checks are going to the right places. But don't worry, we're not going to lose a single cent on this. It's all going to be additive money. We're going to put this out. Let's go. Like, come on. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a clear idea. Don't think for a second that I haven't thought the same thing with my own channel here. I mean, I've put out so many videos at this point. You're telling me I can't go back like two years, just grab the audio and like put a new thumbnail on it and call it like a uh, true believers perch. I mean, why not? I, at this point I could do that and then take a vacation till May. I, I'll be honest. I get these emails from um, Delta and United and these places. They're, they're desperate to get you on a plane. And one came in right before I recorded this video. It's like, how would you like to go to Tahiti? And I'm like, yes, I would. I would happily go to Tahiti. And what's funny is in this mail, they like show a round trip ticket price and a one way ticket price. And I just have to laugh because, you know, who's going to Tahiti one way? I, I mean, I, but, but it's tempting, right? I'm looking at that. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll go to Tahiti one way and just not come back. And then, <laughs> and then I start thinking, this is the dumbest. I'm like, oh man, what would I do for the videos? I'd like to have to get some of them, you know, queued up ahead of time. And then, then that's when the, that's when the idea struck me. That's why I decided to respond to this guy's question and do his video. I'm like, I'll just take some of the old videos. I'll put a new cover on it. Variant cover. True Believers Perch, there you go. Take take the month of January and February off. Done. Sold. I'm sure that would work out great. There's nothing bad that could possibly happen if I did that. Anyway, my point is, please, for the love of God, please, publishers, if there's anyone with any uh, position of authority, uh, do this. And, and if you want some help, I will make your presentation for you. I will go with you. I will be, you can put me on a little speaker on your ear. I'll talk into your ear. I could be the what, Sergio to your whatever. I, I, I can do it. Like, like go, it's, it's free money. And the greatest part of all, it's free money for everybody. Some of the creators get a nice little royalty check they weren't expecting. Publishers get a check. Shops get a check. Everybody gets a check. And fans, and, and put it this way, you know all those annoying fans on Twitter, the really the really annoying ones who are constantly talking about how comics were used to be better and now they suck. You're giving them what they want too. And you, and you can laugh the entire time. Don't worry about giving them what they want. And therefore quote unquote, they win. Don't worry. You're, you're taking their money. It's the perfect crime. You're taking these people who are bitching at you constantly. You're taking their cash and you're shutting them up. I, like it's, it's, it's win, 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 win. There's, there's all wins. There's, there's no lose. The only lose are the egos of maybe some of the current writers if the old stuff outsells them. But even then, who cares? They're independent contractors anyway. What do you care? They don't even have health insurance. Screw it. I'm just, I'm just sorry. I've, I've gone off the deep end now. Hey, I hope everybody is having a good holiday wherever you happen to be right now. Uh, like and subscribe uh, to hear more of this crap. Uh, follow me on social media. Send me a mail. Um, thanks for listening.